Well, hello everyone, I'm Lynn Davenport, and it's a tough act to follow. I've got Patrick Wood's book, and then uh, after I go, it's Alana Freeland, and I have her book too, so this is kind of, kind of exciting for me to meet them in person. That hers is a, a really rich book. Uh, Patrick, I know he's, he has several of them, but the one that I most recently read of, of Alana's is the geoengineering one about synthetic biology. So I've actually started talking. I live in Dallas, and uh, I give presentations to people at the local level because I think that's where it's most important for us to engage. And uh, so I have given some uh, talks about what's happening in the biotech industry, which is basically engineered life, and what's happening in education and how that is intersecting. So, but today, uh, oh, and I want to say thank you to Drew. She helped me put my outfit together. I'm not really a jewelry person because it's an extra step. And so today she helped me take the extra step. And this, I love my beads that she gave me. Thank you, Drew. She's a gracious host. Oh. Hello, what's that? Did I go the wrong way? Yeah, I did. Okay, sorry. See, I even practiced. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about blockchain technology and the intersection in education and also tokenized economies. And I'll explain what that is in a minute. But so my kids went through public schools in Dallas, and uh, the youngest just graduated last year. So there, I have two in college and one in, who's uh, out now working in Austin. And so I, I navigated the whole public school system, which was a rough road. You really have to advocate for your kids. There's a lot going on in the public schools. I know I've heard several of the speakers here over the last two days mention public schools and some of the issues that we have in there. And after COVID, we had this whole biosecurity state and it, people just went crazy masking the children and all the harmful things that they did. In our schools, um, they actually had to wear plexiglass shields that they had to carry around with them everywhere when they would go to class and in lunch. I mean, it was completely bananas. So when we finally, when they got rid of them, when the parents protested, I used it to scrape the ice after we had ice mageddon in Dallas, and uh, it made a good ice scraper for my car. So okay, so what what is blockchain education? So I've learned a lot from Allison McDowell, and she's a friend of mine. Uh, she made this little graphic, and she has a video called Blockchain life on the ledger. And blockchain is essentially just a digital wallet or think of it as like a digital locker. And, and it's, a, it's basically blocks of data stored in a, or uh, linked together in a chain. So it's basically a database. It's, um, it's really cool technology, but we don't want people on blockchain. And that's what they're doing in Dallas. So um, the transactions are duplicated and distributed across a chain of computer systems. Each block in the chain contains a number of transactions added to a ledger. You'll hear the term life on a ledger or a life ledger or a life locker in Dallas. And um, like I said, blocks of data. And this ledger system tracks real world activities to the metaverse. In Dallas ISD, we actually have a metaverse campus where the kids go to school two days a week in person, and then the other three days, they're actually, they have an avatar, and they are in the metaverse, and so they're going through school in the, the virtual world. Think about that. Parents are so excited about it, too. That's the crazy part. Okay, so, and then I'm also going to talk about cryptocurrency because the two intersect, because you'll hear about digital currency, cryptocurrency, digital wallets, virtual currency. We're already kind of using that because, you know, you use a, a, a credit card or you can Venmo someone. But um, it is basically decentralized currency, no central authority. People will pitch it as this wonderful way to share, uh, to, you know, give peer-to-peer -peer transactions. Very convenient. Um, and it's also stored on blockchain. So I, I see all the symbols out there for digital currency, cryptocurrency, virtual currency, credentialing, um, digital wallets, and badging. And I always see the hexagonal symbol, the shape. And so I just kind of put a medley of things that I see out there. Uh, on Facebook, you can, um, they have these um, NFTs that they're, they're talking about, uh, non-fungible tokens. Uh, I won't go into that, but just notice the hexagonal badge. 
Um, you'll see on LinkedIn if I publish. I publish, publish a lot of articles. In fact, um, Patrick Wood featured my hexagons and the hive mind in his publication uh, that he sends out. And um, the, so the hexagonal shape is very common um, that you'll see and uh, digital badging and the, um, so what I meant, what, or what I was gonna say about LinkedIn. So when you publish a, an article on LinkedIn, it sends you back this little ding, you've, you've collected another badge. Uh, Khan Academy, you've heard of that, that's uh, like an online tutoring for math. Uh, notice the blockchain symbol down there. You see the that um, in 3D, it's a, a make, it makes a cube um, outlined. It's a hexagon, and um, often you'll see that symbol for uh, the credentialing in schooling, the micro credentialing, and I'll get to that in a minute. Uh, but then EduBlocks. Um, there's a, a really creepy video from IFTF online that, I mean, on uh, YouTube that it says learning is earning and it talks about um, the future and how it's going to be more gig work and you can earn badges for all the things that you learn and you can earn based on that. So it's basically doing away with the current system of work. And the future of work really is about um, reducing everyone to these credentials. And so they're doing it in education, and so they have to start when the kids are really young so they get used to this sort of, think of it like digital doggy biscuits, think of it as grabbing for, almost like gamification, where you get little tokens. So when I talk about the tokenized economy, I'll, I'll, I'll um, connect that in just a minute. So in Texas, our governor, Governor Greg Abbott, he made, this was in the last legislative session, he made blockchain a big priority. He wants Texas to be a leader in blockchain technology, and we're neck and neck with, uh, I think it's Montana. And so, you know, Texas, we're Texas, we're big, we gotta be first, you know, don't, don't tread on me, you know, come and take it, we're tough. Texas um, governor has tremendous power. He supposedly won by 66.6%. Those on the outside look at him and think he's the staunch conservative. He's actually a total globalist. Um, and uh, we've actually got him. He's been to the World Economic Forum twice, flown on a private jet, so he's all in. Uh, but anyway, so he sets up, after he signs these two bills, one of the bills is for a, a work group on blockchain and to study work, or to study blockchain technology. So, and notice the little symbol up there, uh, is that same blockchain symbol. And so a bunch of moms showed up at the Capitol, and you know, Texas moms do better research than the FBI, or moms in general, right? <laughs> Am I right? I'm right, yeah. And watching uh, some of the, the parents with vaccine injured children, I mean, nobody knows more than those parents, it, and, and also special needs parents children with, parents of children with special needs. They, they do their research. So we show up and we're telling them, uh, you don't need to study blockchain because they're already doing it. And we say, no, we do not consent to this. We do not want our children blockchained, put their whole life on a ledger. And there was testimony after testimony and after, after testimony. And so they heard us and we, we really overwhelmed them. They, they were blindsided. They had no idea that this was even a problem because they are only looking at the good things that come from blockchain. Okay, sure, if you're tracking blueberries or you know uh, listeria or something, yeah, or airline parts, great, but not children. We don't want our children on this. So uh, let's see. So then, you know, now we. Oh, I don't. Oh, sorry, I don't want to play that. That was I meant for that to be a, a dead link there. Okay. So, okay, now I'm gonna go into, um, <laughs> this is how I met Drew, uh, and this does tie into blockchain technology and, uh, and transhumanism because, so Jason, okay, you'll see, Jay, that's uh, Allison McDowell on the left, then Drew and Jason, who's our trusty tech guy in the back, he's a dear friend, and we do a lot of videos with Allison McDowell, and he's, he's always our, he, He's just great. We love him. Uh, so we, we decided to go to a Mormon transhumanism conference, and, and I told some of my friends, well, I'm sorry, where are you? Where? <laughs> I'm not Mormon, and I'm not definitely not a transhumanist. But I wanted to know, because the lineup that they had, it was a tremendous event as far as it was 
the, just a really well run event like this one, of course. And so we go and, and I, we wanted to learn what they're saying, what they're doing. And blockchain technology is a big piece of the transhumanism movement. It's also a big piece of the biosecurity state because if you look at um, how they are storing um, the vaccine passports, it's on blockchain technology, IBM, Hyperledger Fabric is probably the technology of choice. And so it does intersect. And they've used the pandemic as a means to usher in this biosecurity state. So we go to this conference. We had a great time, even though it was scary as hell. Um, they, they, you see all these uh, different, I, I have, um, I didn't put it on here, but if you just saw the topics, they're shocking what they were just plain as, I mean, just putting it out there in plain sight, what they're doing. Um, and they're for this. Now, I will say Drew um, helped me understand the difference between LDS and Mormons and the Mormon transhumanists. Totally different thing. Like, they're on a whole other level. It's not really a, um, a religion so much as it is a, an ideology, the Transhumanist Association. So uh, the book on the right was at the check-in desk that you could buy, and it says Machines for Making Gods, Morm uh, Mormonism, Transhumanism, and Worlds Without End. And then um, the one on the left was the guy who led the Texas Blockchain Council, gave it to one of my um, co-activists. And it says, thank God for Bitcoin, the creation, corruption, and redemption of money. So you're going to start seeing faith communities folding into this agenda. And your behavior and your, um, your, your good works are going to be eventually measured, scored, tracked, traced. And so I just want to kind of plant that seed so you start noticing in your church. When your church starts using words like impact and they start measuring impact, all of this is going to eventually feed into, you hear about the Chinese social credit score, it's not China, it's actually our own people that are doing this and, and that are going to be doing this to us. So we need to reject it at the local level, reject it in your churches, reject it in your schools, and be able to recognize the language that they use. Okay, creepy photo. This is like the embodiment of transhumanism, transhumanism to me. It's like us merging and working and melding with the machines. And so this is a company, uh, Greenlight, that I got wind of this uh, in Dallas. So they have a contract with Dallas ISD and Dallas College, where I ran for a seat on the Dallas College board. I just lost uh, that election last spring and went to a runoff and it was, uh, you know, the elections are not secure, so I'll just leave it at that. So Greenlight Credentials enters into this agreement with, it's a blockchain company, they call it um, Life Lockers. It, they have the low-hanging fruit of the public school children of Dallas ISD, so think about 150,000 students onto this ledger. They're expanding it to my district, which is Richardson ISD. And um, it's kind of the low-hanging fruit because this is a for-profit company. It's the, the deal's kind of done, you know, behind the scenes, no big deal. The parents are thinking, oh, yeah, it's just an easy way to store your credentials. What's the big deal? You know how it is. You go and, and ask for your transcript. It's not easy to get. So they take a legitimate issue, and they um, use that as the, the way to pitch why we need this. You'll own your own data. It'll be convenient. So it's the world's largest blockchain secured ledger of verified lifelong learning records and related credentials. You'll hear that term lifelong learning. It sounds great. Who wants to stop learning? Obviously we don't. We're, we're learning. We're here, right? But lifelong learning is actually a, a, uh, it's a buzzword that doesn't mean what we think it means. It means you're always continually in this system that you will have to be upgrading and upskilling and reskilling and continuously proving and demonstrating that you're complying. Okay, so they secured a no bid deal. So Dallas ISD, DCCD, which is our community college, Region 10 Education Service Centers, there's 20 of those across Texas. And um, so they have this life transcript. So it can hold your certifications, your job experience, verified skills, vaccine status. This is the one that really caught my attention because I believe, and I was talking with Carl about this, because I do believe that come in the near future, they're going to make it where 
you will have no choice. You will not be able to enroll your children in Dallas ISD or the ISDs once they scale this statewide if you don't have the proof of vaccines and whatever that long schedule is that gets longer every year, right? So I'm watching this and it's not there yet, but I can, I can see it's a precursor. So I always felt like the masks were kind of a precursor to the vaccines, which is a precursor to this whole, um, forced, you know, like a, a digital ID, a digital passport, or some sort of way to prove that you are well and you're healthy or whatever they're going to do to control our movements so that we won't be able to go, you know, from state to state, county to county, or even from city to city because they will control how we move about. And you'll, you hear about the 15-minute cities, and I think it plays into that eventually. So it's pitched as a convenient way to own your own data and bypass the middleman. So you'll hear this, um, actually I know there are a lot of libertarians in here, and so I wanna caution you because I think that that's also being pitched as a, a way to reduce government, but it, what I'm seeing is that it actually expands government, which we don't want. And decentralization is blockchain's sleight of hand, and I learned that from Allison McDowell, and I think that's true. Okay, so the founder of Greenlight Credentials, well, he's a co-founder. So Manoj Cuddy is featured here saying this goes on your permanent record. Of course, you know, we're all thinking, oh, yeah, I remember you'd hear about your permanent record. And it turns out it wasn't really a big deal because it ended up, you know, in a dusty vault the, under the, you know, your high school or wherever. It didn't really follow you. Of course, you know, your transcript, whatever happens in college, occasionally you would need that after college. But once you're out, nobody, nobody really cares about your high school transcript or your college transcript. But with this life locker, you can see how they can piece together all these pieces of your life. And I actually embrace now all the inconvenient silos. Like I want my bank separate from my church, separate from my doctor and my medical stuff. I want it all separate. And with this green light credentials, it also stores mental health data Oh, and, and remember the handshake that I showed you of the, the robot in the hand? That actually came from the Cooper Aerobics Center. They have partnered with Greenlight because um, they're also tracking the physical fitness data. So that's Kenneth Cooper, who's the father of aerobics. Um, and they, they have a world-renowned center in Dallas. And um, so that was the, the big PR piece that you saw that robot hand. I thought, oh, I mean, how unnatural this all is. Okay, so Manoj Cuddy, the other founder, is the son-in-law of Ross Perot, the late Ross Perot. So his son-in-law is the founder with Manoj Cuddy of this Greenlight Credentials. And, you know, I, I think, okay, it's like, is this in the family, all this data stuff? Because Ross Perot started EDS, Electronic Data Systems. Okay, so look at the picture on the right here. So I thought this was uh, important for you to see, for those of you who are familiar with the ASU GSV Summit. So um, they had this event, and this was, I believe, let me think, when was, it wasn't five months ago. Um, the Global Silicon Valley deal was, I think this is about, maybe it's a year ago that they did this. So it's been since COVID. So you've got the UNT, um, University of North Texas um, dean. You have the Greenlight Credentials um, founder. Then you have the DCCCD former chancellor, and that's where I ran for a seat on the board. And then you have the Dallas ISD former superintendent, Michael Hinojosa, and they're all sitting up there, and they're talking about, about and this creeped me out. I mean, you hear about cradle to career, womb to tomb, and they call it pre-K to gray. And think about that. So they want early access to children, and it really is a womb to tomb model that we're talking about. So the children are essentially tracked all the way through from pre-K through the workforce in this system. And it said credentialed liquidity, whatever that means. Okay, so then I found this document. This shows that they are studying what they're doing in Dallas ISD and Dallas College to be scaled nationwide. And this is um, a document called Connected Impact, Unlocking Education and Workforce Opportunity Through Blockchain. And um, in Dallas, it seems to be a lot of things that happen in education are, um, they take root in Dallas. And we've got a former Dallas teacher back there and she can give me an amen, right? Am I right, Anna? Yeah. 
Okay, this is very important to understand. When I talk about a tokenized economy, I learned this from Allison McDowell, is that it truly is reducing our children and our workforce to this tokenized economy. And this is Cardano. Cardano, Cardano is one of the, the two. Um, you've got uh, Cardano and Ethereum, uh, for those of you who are familiar with cryptocurrency. And um, go ahead, you can, you can play that. Listen to his words. I do it. Hmm? I do it. The flagship of which is a deal that we have closed with the Ministry of Education containing 5 million students using a technology called PRISM integrated in the Cardano blockchain. Every one of these students will have a digital ID called a DID, and that DID carries with it metadata that will travel with them throughout their entire academic life. And like those who left Facebook's uh, clutches of the university into the real world, uh, will actually follow them into the economic world. So as they graduate, as they go into the economy, eventually this infrastructure can be used for property, for payments, for voting, and all other manners of their economic life. And what's beautiful about this evergreen deal is it's extensible. Our priorities and goals are directly aligned with the vision and priorities and goals of the Ethiopian government. In a recently published doctrine of Ethiopia 2025, there was a bold vision to digitize the country on four pillars, the first of which was a national ID system. It is our belief that the work we have done here with PRISM and Cardano for these 5 million students will inevitably grow to be an inspiration and perhaps the system for 107 million Ethiopians, allowing them for the first time to globalize on equal terms with the United States, the European Union, China, and other modern developed economies. In addition to this, this system goes far beyond just identity. Our belief is that it can be used for, to help people procure jobs, to help people prove their skills, because the system can verify credentials, the system can verify certificates, the system can be used for a litany of activities which are required for people to understand who are credible actors to deal with and who have earned the right to have a job. Yeah, so earn the right to have a job, and, and it aligns with the government, aligns with the government, sorry. So that, if, when you think about that, that's five million children they've experimented on to be scaled nationwide to 100 million people. They can get their parents in now. So we're seeing the same thing happen. Texas has, we educate one-tenth of America's kids. So if this is scaled statewide, then nationwide, you can, you can see how fast this can explode. And when he talked about voting, and I do believe it's going to be the conservatives who actually introduce blockchain as a solution to our election woes, and I say reject that. Say no to that. We want paper ballots, paper ballots, paper ballots. Okay, and then um, I got this in... Um, my, uh, my kids, two of my kids went to A&M, or one's still there, and I saw this, I get the emails that parents get, and I saw the badging thing, and then I went down the rabbit hole, and I realized, you know, all this micro-credentialing, they're doing it at the Texas Education Agency, they're doing it at the, at the, the four-year colleges, they're doing it in the schools, it's a slow creep, but you can see it on LinkedIn, you can see it everywhere. Once you see it, you see the digital, that representation of the hexagonal badge, you see it everywhere. And I think it kind of represents to me is like the hexagon and I talked about the hive mind. It's it's creating this global workforce, the future of work. And um, when you think about the honeybee and hexagons, obviously that's God whatever God makes, you find that Satan wants to create some sort of synthetic or counterfeit version. So I think of it like that. And us just all being pieced together like these little you know, worker bees that are creating this output um, to benefit, not us. And then um, this is a legislator, Brandon Creighton. He's over the Senate Education um, here, or, uh, Committee. And he's also over, so they've merged uh, higher ed and K-12, which is a whole other can of worms. So he's talking about reskilling and upskilling and workforce initiative. You hear, so education is being replaced and supplanted with workforce training. I'm not against workforce training, as long as they're educated, but we're finding that's replacing academic foundations. So that's why you're seeing a complete de deliberate dummy 
dumbing down of a nation of children. And then you've got Ivanka at the World Economic Forum spouting off the same New World Order terms about reskilling and upskilling and, and um, the workforce of the future. So this is happening on both sides of the aisle. And in fact, it's heavy on the right. You wouldn't think that. A planned economy is not what America was founded on, right? Okay, and then um, this is a, a precursor to um, the education savings accounts, what we have. I just noticed the digital badge there, but you hear a lot of, about school choice and letting the money follow the child. Well, that falls, falls right in line with UNESCO's plans. So don't take the bait on that either. If you homeschool, you do not want the government, you don't want that money to follow the child because so do the strings, and I promise you they're there. I'm reading all the bills in Texas, and they're calling it parent empowerment. It's not. Our rights come from God, not from the government. Okay, and then um, you'll see language in at the local level, and I'm talking about Texas and Dallas, but this is everywhere. So you'll be able to, to look for these things in your particular district. Everything's local. And they have the language of next generation technology, and right in there in the, the, in the um, school board policy, this kind of crept in, and it talks about next generation technology, cryptocurrency, blockchain, robotic process automation, and AI. Why that's in there, I don't know, but it's ready for something that they know is coming. Okay, kids as commodity, commodities. I got this from Allison McDowell, and, and I, I'm running out of time. So, um, but she said, we'll end up with, what we'll end up with is probably not digital babies, because I think that's the sensational headline that you see. It's like, ah, digital babies and designer babies. No, she said it'll, it'll be probably not digital babies, but vulnerable children turned into data mined avatars living in schools remade as video games. An example of which is the stimuli model, which I mentioned before was the Metaverse campus in Dallas ISD. Piloted in Dallas, now ready to scale nationally with a 3.25 million in seed funding from venture capitalists. Okay, and so um, the one criticism I'll give on this is I haven't heard a lot of solutions. I know we, we bombard. I really don't want to end with no solutions. The solutions, obviously, you all just showing up here, us gathering, us talking and sharing, and, um, and, but more importantly, our kids. If kids and grandkids, they are so addicted. And the gamification of education, that's a huge mission that I'm on in Texas, is to stop and to get our legislation repealed so that we can get the devices out of the schools. That is a huge reason why the kids are sad and depressed and detached and isolated in, because it's not just the technology at home and the social media, it's the technology in the schools. And that's why our property taxes and our, our um, our debt is so high is because it goes to not just shiny buildings, but also technology. We got to get rid of the technology. We have all the proof that it's not working. It's failing. Um, so some hope. Not blockchain yet. So we're not all on blockchain wallets yet, and neither are children. So now that you can recognize that, you can say no. We want informed consent. That's what this whole talk, this whole summit is about, is informed consent. We do not want our children on these, these um, life lockers. Um, we don't have a national digital ID yet, but you can see it. It's been mentioned about what's happening in um, the airport. I'm probably going to have to get to the point where I can't fly if they're going to make me do the, all the biometric stuff. Reject QR codes at the restaurants. Ask for people. Don't take the the easy, you know, the um, self serve, um, the self check lanes at the stores. Request people that pr pr uh, protects jobs. Prayer and petition, Thanksgiving, that equals equals peace. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. I think that was mentioned by the doctor that was here earlier. Um, let's see. Make Swiss cheese out of the data. Starve the beast. Pull the kids. Say no to the surveys and all of the invasive things happening in the schools. Tell your kids and grandkids this. Reject all surveys. Anything non-cognitive, anything that does not have to do with academics, say no to. Uh, be a wrench in the gears. Uh, return to a classical model of education, big one. Worry and fear feeds the beast. So we are not we are not to have a spirit of fear. All of this stuff is heavy and it's scary, but we we boldly just 
push right through that. We, we can't worry about that. No worry, no fear. We just tell the truth, tell people whatever they need to know that we see and, um, and ask them to join us, come along with us, show up with us. We have to show up at the local level. And I'll close with um, fighting the law with the lawlessness and then taking action, showing up, ask questions, scrutinize every contract, every mem memorandum of understanding, every P3, every agreement, follow the money, and you'll usually find out where the truth is. Gather, sing, worship, and celebrate life. And thanks so much, you all. This has been a fantastic event. So grateful to be a part of it. I'm really, really impressed with all the, the information that I've learned for uh, the last two days. Thank you.